I'm going to read three poems from uh, my chapbook, Incompetent Translations and Inept Haiku. Uh, this is called Epithalamium. They talk, but they don't really talk, she says. They fuck, but they don't really fuck, he says. They've been together a long time, friends say. Marriage? Marriage is passé, pedants say. That that is, is, wrote Shakespeare. Whatever is, is right, wrote Pope. <laughs> this one is called Fate. Comes as a handshake, a pat on the back, fingers through your hair, a nibble on your neck, a kiss on your lips, a tongue down your throat, a hand in your pants. In other words, an offer you choose not to refuse. Well, decline the proffered hand. Turn from the puckered kiss. Refuse the cosmic fondle. It's a noir life. That's what you've been taught. Listen, it doesn't have to be. You don't need to return every single serve that comes like a bullet across your net. <laughs> and uh, this last one is called Just Foundering. And uh, it, it takes off on a line from Moby Dick, uh, which is, um, I can't see. The savage seahawks sail by with sheathed be beaks. The savage seahawks sail by with sheeted, sheathed beaks. Sheathed beaks? Ridiculous. But I love the iambic ring of Herman Melville's prose. The line with its three long E sounds and six S's explains why Ishmael in the sea was not eaten by the birds. And the sharks? Melville has that covered too. The unharming sharks, and the, the short A in unharming and sharks, they glided by as if with padlocks on their mouths. Why? Because Melville needs Ishmael to survive. So Queequeg's coffin pops up out of the vortex, and for almost one whole day and night, Ishmael clings to it until he is rescued by the orphan boat. Otherwise, who would tell this first person tale? Who would write this book? Literature, you see, without plausible justification, without a narrative anchor, is just foundering. Thank you. <laughs>